Well, I wasn't planning to make this video, but here we are. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, and today we're going to talk about the FCC license fee that takes effect on Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. Okay, to bring everyone up to speed, back in 2020, the FCC announced that it would be charging an application fee for amateur radio license grants, renewals, and modifications. This fee was an imposition due to an act of Congress, but the legislature let the commission figure out the amount it will be it, it would be charging. So in the spring of 2021, the FCC released a report in order of what the amount would be and how it would be applied. But they didn't ex uh, specify a start date. They needed an undetermined amount of time to upgrade their systems to be able to process the fees. Fast forward to March of 2022, and the commission released their uh, latest statement uh, that they would start collecting their fees on Tuesday, April 19, 2022. If you want to know more about the fees and how we got here, I got a video on that, and you'll find a link to it down in the description below. But as for the license application fee itself, well, here's the good, the bad, and the ugly of this whole thing. Well, we'll start out with the bad news first. Uh, the $35 application fee uh, will be assessed for new license grants and renewals and vanity license applications. For those that are starting out, after you take and pass your exam for an amateur license, uh, the VEC will process your exam and send your application for license grant to the FCC. The FCC will then send you an email with instructions on how to pay the $35 application fee. Now the important part is that you will have 10 days from the receipt of this message to pay the fee. If the commission doesn't receive the fee in that, uh, in that period of time, your application will be dismissed and the VEC will have to refile your application. Fortunately, you don't have to take the test again as you'll have a certificate of successfully completed exam that's good for 365 days. But you know, missing that email means that there's gonna be more hoops for you to jump through. Uh, so make sure that your email address is correct on the application and also check your spam folder. If you're uh, renewing your license, uh, the same thing's gonna happen. Uh, you'll either renew directly via the FCC Uniform Licensing System or through the VEC, like the ARRL, and uh, you'll receive instructions on how to pay the application fee. Uh, the $35 fee is good for the 10-year duration of your license. Volunteer examiners will not collect the $35 fee, although they will be collecting a $15 testing fee were applicable. Now the good news. Uh, the $35 uh, application fee does not apply to license upgrades. So if you pass both your tech and your general test at the same time, uh, you only have to pay one $35 application fee. If you um, upgrade from tech to general or from general to extra, you will not have to pay the application fee, just the $15 testing fee where it's applicable. That's great news for those looking to upgrade their licenses as it removes a significant cost hurdle in that process. What's more, the ARRL has offered to pay the application fee for anyone under the age of 18 that tests at an ARRL VEC exam session. This is great incentive for youth wanting to get into the hobby and more information on that will be forthcoming. Also, address changes, name changes, email updates, or other administrative tasks will not involve an application fee. Now for the ugly, and it is very ugly. Vanity license applications will require a $35 application fee. If your vanity request is denied, then there, and there can be a lot of reasons why, it's, why that happens, uh, the application fee will not be refunded you will have to resubmit your application with a new $35 fee and try again. Now you can specify up to 12 call sign choices when you make your vanity application. 
But if you're looking for, say, a 1x2 or a 2x1 call sign, uh, the pool of available call signs gets very limited, and you often are in a lottery situation with other applicants. It's not uncommon to um, take two or three shots over several months to uh, find a good 1x2 vanity call sign which you know you'll rack up several non -re non refundable application fees in that process perhaps the good news with the application uh, fee is that there will be less churn in the vanity call sign realm making more vanity calls available because there is a significant number of hams that change their call signs every three to six months with the express purpose of limiting vanity availability to others now that a refund non-refundable fee is imposed, that prospect gets more expensive. Still, if you're planning for a vanity call sign, uh, make sure you've got plenty of choices on your application in the hopes that you'll get um, lucky in the lottery. Still, a $35 application fee isn't the end of the world for most of us. Uh, your license is good for 10 years, so the actual cost is minimal. If you can afford a Baofeng, you can probably afford the license but I'm sure it's gonna give those on a fixed or limited income pause um, and question what the value of their amateur radio license is to them. So what are your thoughts on the good, the bad, and the ugly of the FCC license application fee? Well, leave them in the comments below. If there's enough interest, maybe we'll even talk about it on our next uh, live stream coming up on April 7th. But that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.